Oh, right. Um, so, my name is Monica, hello everyone. Um, and as Christoph mentioned, and as you can see on the slides, there are two names. Uh, on this slide, uh, this uh, method that we used was uh, developed by uh, my colleague and dear friend Kota. Uh, she cannot be here today, so let me be the one to, to uh, walk you through it. And um, as Christoph also mentioned, I have uh, a few words about myself. I was actually a teacher, translator, interpreter for more than 10 years. And um, when, when I felt that I needed a, a career change, I was lucky enough to, to find Pronovix. And um, I started here as a, as a content writer, actually. Um, and uh, then I slowly found my way towards uh, UX and information architecture. What I would like to share with you today is our four step uh, information architecture uh, method. Uh, the way uh, what we used to to discover the information architecture on the developer portals that we built for our clients. Um, so Pronovix, um, we build developer portals. <laughs> we are we are a consultancy. Uh, we have offices in Belgium and Hungary. I am from Hungary actually, uh, but our customers are from all over the world. And three years ago, we specialized in building developer portals. And since then, my colleagues, and as I said, for more than a year now, me too, we've been, we've been doing extensive research uh, into this field. Uh, our clients are from various business domains. And uh, it is very important for us that uh, when, we, uh, when we build developer portals for them, we, take, we try to take care of the whole package. Uh, so we do UX, uh, we help in strategy, uh, in content, and of course in technical implementation. Uh, we work in collaboration uh, with Apogee and we are uh, direct business partners with them too. And uh, uh, kind of a novelty, uh, we have for some months now we've been working on developing a Drupal 8 developer uh, productized developer portal. Um, what we do is like um, we, uh, we are trying to offer a productized delivery process to make unique developer portals, but uh, I don't want to steal the show. <laughs> uh, if you're interested in this, Annette and Christophe are going to make a, a demo about this uh, during the lunch break or in the beginning of the lunch break, so if you're interested, please check that out. Uh, before I start, uh, let me say thank you to my colleagues who made it possible for me to, to be here and who I learned a lot from uh, this past year and also these wonderful communities uh, who provided a wonderful uh, knowledge base and great inspiration for me and I really hope that with this uh, presentation today I can contribute to, to this knowledge base. Uh, the, um, what I... Uh, the we'll focus on in this presentation today is um, as there are basically two questions our uh, clients usually have when they come to us is like what information is essential for a developer portal and how this information should be structured. Uh, our method, this four step information architecture method is, um, is developed to, to be able to answer these questions. In the method, we uh, focus on the users, uh, and by users here, uh, we don't only mean developers, but I will get back to this uh, later, uh, but we also focus on the business strategy and the technical requirements too. Uh, our goal is basically to create a roadmap that can take the team uh, beyond, uh, to and beyond their MVP developer portal. Um, I think this quote speaks for itself, uh, like, yeah, uh, the key to good information architecture and in our case, uh, the key to a good developer portal is to uh, learn as much as possible about what the users of, uh, of a given developer portal want to get done, uh, how they would like to get that done and where they can find the things that they need for this. 
Uh, I'm going to talk a bit. Uh, sorry. Oh yeah, sorry, I <laughs> I missed this slide. Sorry. Uh, so what I am uh, going to talk about first is our goals. Is it okay? It's okay, right? Uh, so our goals, um, our high level goals, and then uh, our goals with the uh, with the actual uh, workshops. So uh, what was our goal? Uh, high level goals when we created the method. We wanted a resilient system. Uh, the business of APIs uh, is changing, evolving uh, very fast and uh, new design patterns emerge all the time so we, we really wanted a resilient system. Um, we also wanted to provide a lens, a sort of a lens to, to guide thinking and planning because of course when our clients come to us, uh, they have several ideas about the things they want uh, and the things they want to achieve, but uh, it is our job to make the road toward these goals as smooth as possible. Um, when our clients come to us, they would like to solve a problem. And this problem usually triggers creating a design and that's how that's, the design is what brings forth the product, uh, finally. And uh, first what we would like to do is to first we identify the benefits that the developer portal should give to its users. This, this is the what. And then we discover the ways uh, in which these, uh, the, uh, these benefits can be delivered. Of course, we would like to provide a great customer experience. Um, well, in case of, um, it is true when, when your users uh, can't get something done on a site, they will go to another site. That's, uh, that's like the natural behavior. But in case of developer portals where developers are the, the main audience or um, yeah, uh, they are a special kind of, we consider them a special kind of audience because they even have uh, better skills to find solutions for their problems elsewhere. So you really have to take care uh, about them to provide a very special experience, uh, user experience, which in this case we call developer experience or DX. Uh, and uh, with the method was also uh, created to realize a content first approach. Uh, we strongly believe that content first approach is the way to be able to to create the most valuable content and to present this content in the most user-friendly way. Um, the method, uh, so besides these high-level goals, um, uh, during our interactions with our customers, we noticed that um, at the beginning of, of this uh, developer portal journey, the, uh, a lot of API teams assume that all developer portals are the same. Uh, in reality, however, what we've seen is that the specific requirements and the business goals of, uh, of companies have a significant impact on their dev portals. Uh, so that is why we always start our projects with an information architecture uh, phase in engagement. Uh, during this, we can clarify the tech-related questions and we can uh, identify the, the users and uh, keep focus on them. And the method consists of four steps and uh, I, I hope it is visible that uh, we, uh, we build this method so that every, each step is built on the previous one, on the results of the previous ones. Here you can you can, okay. And uh, here you can see the four steps. Let me guide you through them one by one. The first step is what we call a website architecture analysis interview. The goal of this first step is to find the answers or start looking for the answers for the fundamental questions, which are the business goals, the target audience, the uh, and the API strategy. Um, this uh, step is a semi-structured online interview. Um, 
the suggested participants throughout the information architecture phase are the same, so it's best if the product owner of the developer portal is there, or lead architect, an API developer, uh, and maybe someone from marketing, UX, or basically any other stakeholders that the client can or want to uh, involve. Uh, so the interview uh, focuses, or uh, the, the questions of the interview are grouped into four main topics. The first topic is the Dev Portal side goal. So we basically ask our clients uh, to define what problems they would like to solve with the portal. And of course, we try to identify how these uh, align with their business goals. The second, very important, is about the target audience. Uh, how we try to uh, find, define our target audience is, uh, so first we discover what our clients know about their own users from their data or user research. Uh, but of course we also share knowledge or, um, from our research into developer portals. Um, just to mention, uh, some of our research materials. One is uh, Michael Mang's study from uh, Merseburg University of Applied Sciences. The title is Application Programming Interface Documentation, What Do Software Developers Want? Which is a very comprehensive study of uh, developer needs. And uh, we also use the research study, The Role of Conceptual Knowledge in API Usability by Andrew J. Coe. Um, so, we basically try to identify the core tasks the users of our clients need to accomplish, and we try, uh, we always keep in mind to think holistically about goals, uh, and um, based on this information, we can come up with the proto-personas, but let me get back to that. Uh, we also have questions around uh, our client's competition. Uh, together with our clients, we analyze the competition so that we can see what are the things that uh, that they would like to follow or learn from, and we can also see things that they would like to avoid or do differently. And we always ask for inspiration sites. We ask our clients to show portals that, uh, that serve as inspiration for them. And the main uh, deliverable from this step is what I mentioned, is the proto-persona. So based on the interviews, we create these fictional characters uh, who represent the typical users that might visit and use a developer portal. Um, in UX, the typical names for user personas are like, I don't know, Housewife Mary or Startup John, that's what I found. Uh, we usually have something like Developer Robert, but we also have uh, managers, manager personas. Uh, but even when we when we focus on the developers, um, we can um, further specify what kind of developers we want to focus on, because based on their backgrounds and their different goals, they uh, can have very different goals on the on the portals. Okay, uh, the second step is what we call an inventory session. That's what it is called. So we want to inventorize and, and, and review all the existing materials for the portal. Um, this uh, inventory session, usually, it is also an online session. Uh, it consists of two parts, uh, a presentation and a discussion. Why a presentation and what is that? Uh, during our work with our clients, we often, um, we often face, encounter two misconceptions about developer portals. One is that developer portals are websites, and the other is that developer portals are nothing uh, more but the reference documentation for your APIs. And we usually start the inventory sessions with a presentation in which we are trying to clarify these misconceptions. What is a developer portal? Then, um, I, there's no clear cut definition for this, but in, in one very short sentence, I would say that it is, uh, it is a place for all of the stakeholders of your APIs, and it is the tool with which your APIs can fully achieve their business goals. 
so there are much more than websites. And as for reference documentation, yes, they can start, developer portals can start as reference documentation for your APIs, but what we're trying to show our clients is how they can be expanded to be much more than that. We also bring real life examples and uh, we always try to focus on the, on, the, on the relevant client's industry because that also defines um, the dev portal. That's the presentation. And the second part of the inventory session is a discussion uh, where we, um, as I said, review and inventorize the existing materials. Uh, online interview and this session, the length of this session can vary uh, based on the existing materials. So we are usually somewhere between one and three hours. Um, we can have a better understanding on the, on the background uh, during this session and uh, we can see if there are maybe problems or glitches with the, with the current system and we can have a fuller picture on the expectations. Uh, and the main deliverable here, again, let me share it with you, uh, is a list of the a documented list of inventory and uh, there are four types of content in this list. There is the existing content from the client side, uh, but during the session we also decide what we keep from this, what we need to change, what uh, needs to be uh, added. Example, we also have uh, the examples from the inspirational sites, as I mentioned. We ha have here the results of the website analysis discussion, the first session. And uh, we add elements that we suggest based on these first two interviews. This was the online part, usually, of the, of the IA phase. And the third step is the IA workshop itself. Uh, the main goal of this session is to create a, a, not a site map, but uh, by the end, two versions of a site map. One which has the full vision of the final developer portal and one MVP version uh, which can help us define the, the immediate to-do list uh, in the development phase. The workshop, um, the workshop requires close collaboration and intense communication interaction between the participants. So if it is possible, we usually do this on site. Uh, but um, we also have some experience doing it online and um, for this we used um, an online collaboration tool called Miro. Uh, previously this was called Real Time Board. I think. Um, both the online and on-site versions can have uh, ch different challenges, different pros and cons for both for the clients, the participants and for the information <coughs> architect. Just to mention a few uh, advantages, for example, uh, in case of an on-site workshop, it is uh, easier to build uh, more personal relationships with the team members, with the participants, which can come in handy in the later phases too. Uh, and maybe it is a bit, uh, it's easier to keep this deep focus required for two days. But in case of an online session, uh, that is usually not two days, so that's usually a week with shorter sessions. Um, we cannot expect participants to be there online for two days. Um, and sometimes these smaller sessions are easier to fit with a busy team's schedule, and it can also be a nice fit for a distributed team, which has also happened with our clients, that like uh, the participants would also come from different countries. Um, the first day, so two days, the first day of, uh, of the workshop uh, we have four exercises and uh, by the end of this day we will be able to create the first version of a sitemap. As I mentioned, each step of the workshop builds on the results of the previous one. So what we start uh, the, uh, the workshop with is uh, we validate the proto-personas that we created based on the results of the first two sessions. Uh, 
And it's very important that we continue the day and the, the, the exercises, keeping in mind the goals and needs of these personas. Um, why is this important? I read this analog in a blog post. It's like a, that you, you wouldn't go on a mountain hike without a map and a compass. So the, the personas and their needs and goals uh, are our map and compass throughout the workshop. The second step is uh, what we call an element collection, uh, the por uh, based on the personas and their needs, uh, the participants collect the elements for the deck portal uh, based on their behavior, their expected behavior. So. Uh, we then continue uh, with sorting this inventory of elements. Uh, but here uh, we have a starting point is the deck portal element list from the second step, if you remember that. Uh, and to that we add the, the results of the element collection, the second step here. Uh, the, the participants are asked to sort these elements and to group them, group the similar elements together. And when that is done, to give a name to each group. Um, so uh, these names and uh, categories will, uh, will, will be organized and this will give us a first high vision of the, of the site map. Uh, here we, we don't want to focus on a deep structure. We try to avoid duplication of the elements and um, what we do is uh, we try to, to functionally maybe merge pages if possible or categories or make uh, smaller categories if the group is too big depending on the, on the needs. So we have a first version of the sitemap by the end of the first day. This is usually between six and eight hours. Uh, the second day of the workshop starts with, um, it's actually a fun exercise that you, uh, participants usually enjoy a lot. They have to create storyboards. Uh, the storyboards will visually explore the user's experience with a product. Um, the stories are, are, again, a great way to uh, reveal the user persona's needs and motivations when they visit the dev portal and it, uh, they can help us to put, put everything in context. The stories always start with, a, with the original life condition, uh, then the death portal sets up a journey of transformation, and finally we can see an enhanced future for our personas. Um, yes, so the storyboards, and the second one is uh, we use these storyboards and, uh, and we use that or, or um, put these stories on the sitemap uh, to check whether the sitemap is uh, appropriate for the stories. Like we can validate the sitemaps and we can, uh, we can create an MVP version uh, this way uh, because it can tear down, tear down the high vision sitemap into smaller chunks and we can see the most important things to focus on in the development phase. Uh, but this is not the end. The workshop finishes with, uh, with defining the next steps based on the exercise exercises that we did so far. So what we do is uh, we grab the elements on the MVP sitemap and we check each page, each component closely and uh, we identify the content layout first. Uh, so we will be uh, able to add uh, estimates into three areas. The first, yeah, the first area is the content. Uh, so we can see what uh, content is available already uh, and what content needs to be added. And we can also see if we already have templates to help in the creation of that content or we, need, or we can create templates uh, for that. Then we can make estimates about the design phase, about the page layout and, uh, and the brand needs, 
and of course uh, we can okay we can discuss uh, we can um, make estimates about front end and back end related tasks. Uh, what we do then is we discuss this list with the customer and this again provides us a place to be able to either narrow down or broaden the scope uh, based on the site on the estimates and uh, we uh, and by the end we agree on how we move, uh, move forward to the next phase in the development uh, so to sum up the main deliverables of uh, of the of the information architecture phase uh, we have a workshop report we have the personas that we can focus on throughout the development phase we have uh, two site map, two versions of the sitemap one for the final site and one for the MVP uh, we have the user journeys on the sitemaps and uh, we have an element list for the MVP pages that, when, that we can use uh, throughout the development phase. Um, so, as I've mentioned, each step of this information architecture phase takes its base material from the previous step, and uh, each step defines the goal of, goals of the, of the next one. The length of the, of the sessions and, uh, and the exercises can vary based on the, on the preparedness of the clients too. Like uh, we have clients, we have had clients who have very clear ideas about what they want, uh, about their requirements, while there are others who require more guidance from us. But the method is, uh, is developed in a way that we can have both these needs or we can assist both of these is these clients and um, yeah I think one of the most important feedbacks that we got from our clients um, in connection with this method is that uh, uh, one of our clients said that yes they thought that they had clear ideas and they had very good ideas uh, but they said that uh, these uh, two days of the workshop helped them help them clarify their ideas and to see how they, they, their goals can be reached. So I think that was our goal with the, with the workshop too. So it was a very great feedback to hear. Thank you very much uh, for listening uh, to me and Christopher already mentioned, but if you're interested in our research materials, you can, uh, you can, uh, Sorry, <laughs> subscribe to our mailing list or check on our blog. Thank you very much. <laughs>